Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. So, you want to make a new saw. That means, well, you got to cut your teeth on this project. Let's dive in. I'm in the process of making a couple back saws. And one of the most daunting things is I've got a blank plate here that's smooth. And I don't want it to be smooth. I want it to be really bumpy. I want teeth in that. And cutting the teeth is actually a difficult task and it can be very daunting to the new person because if you don't get them accurate then you're going to have a tooth that doesn't cut quite right and this is one of those things where precision is really important the more precise you make the teeth the better it's going to cut there are two main methods and i've used both of them over the years both of them use coming in with a hacksaw first and then refining the teeth with the file the hacksaw gives you a notch evenly spaced apart then the file comes in and cleans it up most of the time that works really well, except for when you get to really, really small teeth, then the hacksaw isn't going to quite work. The problem with the hacksaw is it likes to jump around, so you need very, very tiny teeth on the hacksaw. And yes, that means you need a saw to make a saw. Mm. The first and probably most common method is to get a saw filing guide. And these are all these tiny little lines and you can get these spaced out to exactly the tooth you want. You can download these on Blackburn Toolworks. I'll leave a link to that down below. And they're really quick and easy to go. You cut off what you want. You literally glue it onto the plate. And then you have all of these lines that you cut at the edge of each line. Up until a couple months ago, this is how I did it. You have to be very accurate with it. You have to be very good with the saw. You have to be very precise with it because there's nothing guiding the saw. You're just going to a mark. But if you can saw to a mark, you can generally make this work. It takes a little bit of practice. The problem is every now and then there's one tooth that's off a little bit and that will bug you for the rest and it will be one tooth that occasionally wants to catch. And it'd be better if they were all exact. The next most common method, the one most beginners go to, is to use a filing guide block. This is a method that has been popularized by Paul Sellers, and he has an amazing video on it. I'll leave a link to it down below. Really goes into detail on how to make this, and it works very, very well. And the nice thing about it is it actually captures the saw and holds it in place, so you can get an accurate cut on every tooth. I can take the small guide, which I have this one set up for an 8 PPI cut, and I can put it up against the saw with those cuts just a little above flush, and that will allow me to guide the saw. So when the saw comes in, it rides in that groove, and I can make a cut at every one of them. If you're a little unsteady with the saw, this actually works really well. It holds it together and allows you to make accurate cuts that are evenly spaced, as long as you can make a block that has accurate cuts that are evenly spaced. And generally, it's much easier to make a block to do it than it is to make the cuts. You make a segment here, then you move the block over, and you do a segment here, and you move the block over, and you do a segment here, and it works really well. There are a couple downsides to it though. Number one is the blocks tend to wear out. They're wood and you're rubbing a saw against it and the set on the teeth is going to uh, slowly wear this away and it's not gonna be quite as accurate. So you usually make one for every saw that you do because they tend to wear out after a saw plate or two. The more accurate you are with your cutting, the longer they'll last, but they will all wear out. Next, in making a guide, you have to be accurate. So you're kind of back to the original problem. If these cuts aren't accurate, then your saw is not going to be accurate. So you need to make sure that this is accurate. And there are a few ways to do that, and it's much easier to do it on a small piece than doing it over the course of a whole saw. But this takes more time, and you have to move it for every segment. And it's a little fiddly. So up until a couple months ago, I'd tell people, you know, if you're really getting started and it, it's the first time you've done it, do it this way. Watch Paul Seller's video a few times and go with it. It works really, really well. It's going to take a little bit of practice. You're going to have to put some time on it. You're going to have to do some patience, but you'll get really nice clean teeth. And I'd say if you've got the skill for it and you know your saw is not going to jump much and you can get a nice clean cut and hit a line every time, then doing a saw filing guide is much easier. You can just glue it onto the saw and you can do the whole thing at once and go boom, 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 boom. It's very, very quick. It's very efficient, but you have to have the skill for it. So if you have the skill, use this. If you don't have the skill, use this. But then I saw a video. A2 Wood Art put out a video showing how to cut teeth. And he was talking through the same problems of, do you use this or do you use this? And uh, yeah, I'd rather do something different. And he decided to use something like this. Um, yeah, what, what is this? Let me explain. So this is two hacksaw blades separated by a spacer down the middle. And my spacer happens to be a ruler. I wanted about that thickness. The spacer then determines your PPI. The thicker it is, the smaller the PPI. The thinner it is, the more the PPI. And I have mine set up to make about a 10 PPI cut right now. One of the two blades has the teeth on this side, and the other one has the back of the blade, no teeth on this side. 
So one of these is upside down and the other one is right side up, separated by a thickness. Alex from A2 Wood Art made his with some random hardware in the shop and it worked really well, but he only had a small segment on this and I really wanted to have the full length cut of this. So I had these one inch C clamps that actually work really, really well, uh, as long as they're backed off a little bit. The other problem that he had was making a consistent cut depth. You want it to cut to the same depth every time. So every saw cut is evenly spaced and the exact same depth. That makes it really, that makes it really easy for when you come in with a file, the file can ride into it and theoretically you should be able to take the same amount of strokes on every single one. This gives a very accurate and clean cut on every tooth. So to make this, I went and bought two hacksaw blades. I could have just purchased one and used the back of an old one. And I made sure that they were very, very, very small teeth. The smaller teeth, the better the control. These ones are 32 teeth per inch. Yeah, um, 32 TPI is a really, really tiny tooth, but it makes a very clean and precise cut on the saw. I then used a couple finish nails to set the spacer the exact same height all the way along it that I can come in with the C-clamps and clamp it down. Those finish nails allow the spacer to be the exact height above it so that the spacer becomes the depth stop for every cut, and every cut is the same thickness. So then I can mount this whole contraption in the hacksaw with the downward facing teeth, the one that's actually connected to. So the one without the teeth is just clamped onto the side of it. To make the first tooth, I just make a cut. It doesn't have to be a very precise placement. It doesn't have to be anywhere. That's just the first cut. Then I put the blade without the teeth right into that cut and lean it a little bit away and slides right along. Now I've got two teeth right beside each other. Then I put that in the next cut, lean it over just a little bit. And I've got another one there. I lean it over, put it in the next cut. And I've got another one there. And I lean it over, put it in the next cut. And I've got another one there. This will allow me to march right along and make evenly spaced teeth all the way along the saw plate. As long as I get the first one in there, I know that they're gonna be the evenly spaced out and exactly where I want them to be. Every one of these are evenly spaced and right about the same depth. So now I can come in with a file and I can file them down with two or three strokes per spot and get my exact teeth at the exact spacement I want. Every tooth being exactly what I want it to be. Very quick, very easy, and very accurate. Now the downside to this is you have to make the jig. And if you know anything about my videos, I don't like making jigs. And so there's part of me that's like, eh, I don't know if I like that. I like doing the freehand. I like just putting this on and going to town with it. And most of the time that works. But there's something really nice about this just being accurate every time. I don't have to think about it. I can just zone out and go cut, 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 cut. <laughs> and it works. The other difficult part is finding the spacer. In my case, I wanted a 10 TPI, which this ended up being the exact spacer I want. So I could use scrap metal for round. I could use shim stock. Um, I could grab a piece of wood and plane it down to the exact thickness I want. Basically, the way you can measure it is if you want, say, 10 TPI, that means 10 teeth per inch. In other words, 10 cuts per inch. In other words, one tenth of an inch. One tenth of an inch needs to be the thickness of your spacer plus the thickness of your second blade. So with those two put together, they should equal one tenth of an inch. If you are going for something like a five PPI, that's an easy one, that's two tenths of an inch. Uh, so that means your spacer plus your saw plate need to equal two tenths of an inch. In other words, you need a thicker spacer. And so it's relatively easy to set those up and just pick the right spacer. The problem is what do you get the spacer out of? You could plane down wood to the right thickness. You could do what I did, use a ruler or shim stock or whatever scrap metal you have lying around. Though the next problem then is setting your spacer at the right depth. You want your spacer to be what actually stops your depth of cut. And to do that, you need something that's harder. So wood might work, but it might wear out. Paper, that's probably gonna wear out. Um, metal, it's probably what you want to go with. So if you can find a ruler that's the right thickness or a collection of rulers or shim stock, uh, it works fairly well for that. Then you need to find something in the shop to set that spacer at the right height. And for me, that was two finish nails. It actually worked out really well. You may want to set a little bit higher if it's a thicker cut. In other words, you may need a larger nail or something else that can fit between those two blades and lift the spacer up. 
Then you've got the how do you clamp it all in place? And you could do it Alex did and get some hardware that wraps all the way around it. The problem with that is you can only put one at the beginning and end of it. And so I liked having these C-clamps so that I could use the full course of the cut. That meant I had to get C-clamps. And if you don't have small one inch C-clamps already, then you might be up a crick without a paddle. I did try using it with a set of vice grips and those actually work pretty well. You just have to have vice grips that then fit in around the beam and that becomes a little fiddly. I will leave a link to these C-clamps because you can actually buy a set of them online, relatively affordable. But then again, you know, at that point, if you're buying the saw plate, you may wanna just get it with the teeth already cut in it because that's actually a really easy method. As far as I'm aware, Alex is the first one to come up with this idea. And it is really an ingenious idea. I really like it. I haven't seen anything like it. And as with all new ideas, there is room for improvement. Um, I did a few things that I think improved it. Maybe, maybe not. Um, so definitely take a look at his video and then see, you know, what improvements would you like to make? And I'd love to hear about those because there's got to be a way of making this a little bit easier to put together and simpler, or maybe getting specialty shim stocks so you can get the exact same thickness on every cut. But um, other than that, it's a rather straightforward idea. Put two plates together, one of them upside down, and use it as the reference to space them off the exact same amount. So, let's crowdsource this thing. What could we do to make this better? What are some other ideas, something we could put into it? I would love to hear your ideas on that. Throw them in the comments down below, and as a byproduct, that does actually help out the channel. Thank you! Anytime you hit like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, you hear those things all the time, but it really does help out the channel, so thank you. Anytime you just put a random comment down below, such as random comment down below, thank you. <laughs> so yes, uh, thank you for that. If you want to take it one step farther and really help the channel out, there are a bunch of names scrolling over here. They are the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by the viewers, as well as members here on the channel, uh, people who financially help out this channel and keep us going. Thank you. Uh, without you guys, these lights wouldn't be on and the channel wouldn't be going. I say it every week, but honestly, thank you. We have special perks for both patrons and members, so if you want to find out more about that, you can click the link for Patreon in the description down below, or click the little join button down below and become a member here on YouTube. I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Okay, I know. You saw this joke coming. Well, I guess we can file that one away then. There's wood by right. Getting jiggy with it. <laughs>